Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and a very warm welcome to Red and Blue News and welcome to the Red and Blue Review. My name and your host, the evening. My name is Nick Philpot and I'm delighted, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to see this in about five seconds from now. You're going to think, what was he doing? My first guest of the evening and a very warm welcome back to the ever so talented Ian Lyons. Ian, good evening, mate. Hello. <laughs> How are we all? all right, Hopefully mate, how are you doing? ecstatic. Yeah, not uh, bad, not bad. Yeah. Good man, good man. Now we do know we do actually have Mr. Holyoke in the background. Yeah, um, we won't bring him up on the screen until he's sorted out his issues with his microphone. He's having one of his technical failures again at the moment. So we will be joined by Gel shortly, I hope. Okay. So I'm giddy, Ian. I'm Are you? Giddy. Yeah. Well, you're all right, I'm not surprised. Oh mate, I'm so giddy. I can't I'm not very good with heights, okay. Uh, I actually, this is a true story. Years ago, I actually applied to be a fireman, okay? And I decided against being a fireman because I don't like heights, okay? We're sitting fourth in the Premier League. What are we doing up here? Well, I don't know. I think someone's turned the table upside down, haven't they? Clearly. If we're fourth from bottom by the end of the season, I'll still be happy along with a lot of people. But yeah, no, listen, make hay, hay while the sun shines, eh? Listen, it, it, why not? I mean, it's four games in... Um, We've got seven points, which we're going to cut up. We're going to talk about the points lots later during the show, okay? And our points tally so far. Uh, did you get those stats that I sent you earlier, by the way? I did, but I ignored them. Okay. No, 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 I didn't. I didn't. Yes, I did get them. Would you like me to read them out? Yeah, yeah later on. Okay, <laughs> we'll do that during the show. So coming up during the show, we've got, we've got a stat-filled show for you this evening, because he's got a load, I've got a load. Um, I'll give you a clue where we're at, okay? In the... Uh, at 17-18 season, at this stage in the season, how many points were we on? 17-18? Zero. Yeah, is the right answer. Okay, so obviously in 1920, uh, season 1920, we're in fourth position on seven points. 18-19, three points. 16-17, four points, and so on and so forth. 13-14, 18th with three points. So we've had a cracking start, okay, what do you put it down to? Because don't forget, before you answer me, okay, we had lots of people, there are people all over social media saying, Parrish is this, uh, Hodson is that, okay, in, out, in, out, let them shake it all about. What do you put it down to? Uh, <laughs> Jordan Ayew, there you go. Is he, is he the difference? <laughs> Well, he certainly was yesterday, wasn't he? So, well, listen, I've got to hold my hands up. You're seeing it, holding my hands up. I said uh, in the preview that, what is it, a point is worth two million for us. And if he scores one off his backside and gets us three points and he's paid his way, he's yeah. done it already, is not he? Not weird. And obviously, he's the type of player that scores in bursts as well. So I would expect to see another And, he's a, and he's a confidence player as well. Uh, and he, oh, without he, a doubt. He, I, I honestly, listen, before we carry on, I, I want to carry on with Jordan in a second. Guys, yeah. I can see you all in the chat. Lee, Andy, uh, Ben, good. I can see you there. Uh, if you joined at the beginning of the show, you'll know where Gel was, Ben, but you didn't, so I'm not answering you. Summer, Chris Brandrick, Andy Harper. I want to mention. I want to carry on with Jordan I in a second, and then we're going to get straight into the into the game. You I want to mention Andy Hopper. Okay, do you know who he is? Have no, you seen him in the chat? No, I do. Okay. No, I This fella, this fella is a local Hi, man Andy. living in Australia. Okay, and he said something in good the day. chat today. He said something in the chat today that really affected what you know my preparation for the show. The show, the show was going to be obviously positive and upbeat and everything else. And he said in the chat publicly that he has now deleted the others, okay, the others, okay. And this is what he does with these. I don't, I, I can't remember where we are, where we're at, but uh, of his time and day. So this, is, so it's, I think it's late at night over there, okay. And he's no, up. it's it's early in the morning. Uh, he'll tell us. He's, he's watching us live. Nigel's watching us. Lee Gilbert, Paul Streeter, Keith, I can see you. Neil Chatterjee, guys, I can see you. Steve White, hello, buddy. I hope you're well. Uh, uh, Simon Cribby is watching in Canada. Um, Neil Costa. I can see you all. Okay, Jordan Ayew. So, Jordan Ayew is obviously in a position where he's um, feeling loved. Okay, he's feeling wanted. And, so he should be. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think, to me, the biggest part of yesterday and of course he scored the goal was how did he feel when he heard that stadium the stadium singing his name it must have been gone yeah 
Well, he, well, you know, right. He must learn. Listen, we all like a try. We've said it so many times on this place, on this cast. Um, it doesn't matter how bad, how bad a performance you've turned in previously. If you try it, you will get the support of the ground, the support of the fans. And that, to be fair, is what he's done since the start of the season. You know, he's probably been the one player that's just, the amount of turnover he gets, the amount of, Times he closed his centre backs down. Mings just didn't have a chance yesterday, uh, running it out because he was getting harried, hassled, turned over, and then setting up an attack. A lot of the time, you know, he was just down down to him because he won the ball and he was furthest forward. But yeah, you know, and so when you play well, the fans chant your name. It's a shame we haven't got a, a song for him yet, uh, other than Jordan and I. But nevertheless, it's a start, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah, no, fair play to him. Fair play. Well done, Jordan. Steve White saying in the chat that he's on a bus in Brighton playing this out loudly. He oh. goes! <laughs> well, as you guys mentioned on the uh, the podcast last week, my boy got married and uh, to a Charlton family and he walked into Glad all over. So I was proud of the punch. <laughs> Is that Sophia? Or Sophia or... Sophia, yeah, not Sophia. Fiona, Gel. Yeah, not Fiona. <laughs> and also, a very good morning from Christchurch, New Zealand, to Tim Richards. Uh, Tim, delighted you're joining us, mate. Welcome to the show. Thank hey, you. It's not far from Australia. Morning, I told you. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So, right, we're going to move on if we can. Uh, Gel, ladies and gentlemen, Gel is actually with us, okay, uh, but he's having a bit of a tweak with his microphone. I don't know whether that's actually an, an analogy for something else, but uh, Crystal Palace marched on to victory against Aston Villa at Sellers Park yesterday afternoon, being the dominant of the two sides from the first whistle earning three points from their fine-looking Jordan Ayew, okay, who banged against his former club late into the game. Now, uh, before we came on air, Ian, you alluded to something, OK? And I'm going to chuck that? you under a bus. Mm. Match of the day host... Oh! Match of the day host, Juggy and Lineker, tweeted, this disallowed goal for Aston Villa in the last minute has to be seen to be believed. Why VAR didn't correct what appeared to be an awful refereeing error... Is beyond me, but well, in truth, I... it, but in truth, friends' decision saved Hodson's side from ending a match which they had dominated in an embarrassment. With the host having twenty-two shots on Heaton's goal, Cheka Kuate was among the most wasteful with just one of his six shots being on target. Captain Luka Milivojevic also went close, seeing an effort from distance pushed away from the top left-hand corner of Heaton's goal straight after Trezeguet was dismissed. But despite his wastefulness. Palace, victory for Palace enhances an extend, extended run of good form in the top flight. Indeed, you could be forgiven for not knowing that Manchester City, 52, and Liverpool, 48, have won more points than the now 33 collected by Palace since February last year. I think it's last year I was referring to it. With more than 10% of the season already complete, the South London club can now hope they can carry their momentum into uh, September's international break. Right. Let's do Juggies first, if you can. Over to you. you Desperate watched... ramblings of a Leicester fan. Yeah. End of story, yeah. isn't it? Listen, as far as the goal's concerned, um, to be honest, I thought that it was a goal. When I was in the, in the ground and I was doing my pieces, uh, yet another last-minute conceded goal, I didn't see that there was much wrong of it. Obviously, because it was Grealish, and I don't know whether we were going to come on to Grealish to talk about Grealish later. but yeah, we are. Um, yeah, we are. But the fact is that he got picked up a number of times for just dropping to the ground, you know, essentially what Zaha has been um, accused of for the last three or four years yeah. um, and Zaha has grown out of. They just have to realise that they do not get free kicks just for dropping to the ground. He was on his way down. Uh, Wilf, Wilf put in a challenge. He was on his way down. Kale took his uh, foot away and therefore he blew up. End of story. Get on with it. And I don't know if anyone else noticed this, but Greedish went for Hodgson as Hodgson was walking off the pitch because Hodgson must have said something and he went for him. Didn't so, uh, yeah, no, there, was, there was a lot of handbags. So they, they, felt, they felt hard done by it. The one thing I would agree with Lineker is that we should have put that game to bed way before then. Um, and, you know, the pessimist in me would say, is it papering over the crack still? You know, um, I saw there was actually a message on the on the page today asking the same question. I haven't included it in questions. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, in the chat, please bring your questions up. I've got two pages of questions, so we'll do the do the game, okay? And it's great, okay? 
Uh, but bring your questions in the chat and I'll try and get to as many as we can. I can see every one of them. And there is one person, special person, before you carry on, Ian, that I want to say hello to. And thank you for my beer yesterday. John Knox, great to see you yesterday. Thanks for me, pint. And to my we right saw Ben as well, didn't we? Uh, not Ben Allen. Ben Allen wasn't up. Uh, no, Ben uh, Agramini. Oh, uh, Ben Agramoni, yeah. And um, John, uh, John Knox, just to let you know, to my right-hand side is the pile of stuff, okay? And yours is amongst it. So on Jill's behalf, and there will be more information about it later on. Thank you very much indeed. Claire, good evening, darling. And a very warm welcome while we're waiting for Jill to sort his microphone out to Mr. Allen. Allen Mr. Ben Allen. How are you doing, man? Not bad, you. Ben all right, buddy, you're all right. Okay, I'd like your views, please. Hello, on, um, We're going to cover the game, okay, in its entirety. Uh, I presume you saw all the game you said. Did you see the game? Yep. Okay, so we'll, we'll cover bits and pieces from the first half, the uninspiring first half, really. But just that, just the big talking point uh, uh, that Ian was just alluding to, your, your initial thoughts on it before we do it in detail later. Was that Grealish? Yeah. I think throughout the game, he threw himself to the floor at every mm. opportunity. And the one time that it really was, you know, quite close, it was, to me, it was the boy that cried wolf. The, the, the amount of decisions that he got, that I think the ref just probably may have called it wrong. But throughout the game, he'd done it and thrown himself to the floor. This time he did it in the, close to the penalty area and the ref... It was the boy that called Wolf. Cried I'm not so sure. I agree with some of the comments in the chat. I'm just keeping my eye on as while you're talking, Ben. Mark Bushwell says Villa uh, will get spanked this season. We should have won that 6 0. Um, Simon Kearson said, uh, we can, can we play with two strikers at home uh, as we can be quite defensive? Uh, Daniel have Garlic. Got two strikers. What, uh, what's happening behind the scenes at Palace? Any good news up and coming? Right. Well, if we get time later, Daniel, we'll come to that later on in the, later on in the evening. Uh, I'm actually going to take issue with uh, one of those points about they're going to get spanked, okay, and I don't believe they will. Looking at what I saw Sheffield away, looking at what I saw yesterday, I think they've got, they've both got some very good players. Are they worse than Palace? I believe they are, so which is why I think we'll be totally safe, but I don't believe I think they will give a lot of people a lot of good games. I don't think they'll get spanked this season at all. Ben, your thoughts? I think Villa need to sort that, if you look at our two, our central defence, both when Kelly came off and then Sacco came on, and compare it to theirs, I think they're going to struggle with that. Cause I thought Tyrone Mings was very, very average. Average, yeah, bad. Good word. Yeah, quite great. You you look at him; he's got all the assets. He's a big lump. He's mobile. He's fast, but his positional sense and he got caught out a couple of times yesterday. I think he's going to have to shape up pretty quick. Otherwise, I think they're going to struggle. The irony okay. being is that we were after him when he was at Reading and went to Chelsea, doesn't he? Weren't we? Mm. Mm. Yeah, he's he's got he, all the assets, but yeah, definitely. I think to what we had. I thought their fullbacks were atrocious, and I thought that's where we got a lot of our joy. Play, certainly playing five across the middle, anyway. And if you well, look at the um, look at some of the comments, uh, and you listen to some of the so-called pundits out there, this Jack Grealish is supposed to be the, the, the new Messiah, the coming. The, the next uh, coming, um, he was. He, uh, he clearly is a good page, but he ain't that great, in, in my opinion. Oh, look, there's a bloke in the chat, guys, called Jill Holyoke. Uh, good evening, Jill. Thank you for joining us this evening. You and the other eight over eighty people there, right? So moving on, scrappy first start for the first few minutes. Okay, uh, possible penalty shout for us. Jordan Ayew bundled over in the box uh, by their number six. Okay. Uh, not a penalty for me. Ian, your thoughts? No. 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 no uni unanimous. I mean, they, they even highlighted on uh, crap of the day or something um, that they thought it might have been a penalty. Uh, he, I mean, there was clear contact. I mean, he, he did get a shove in the back. Your thoughts out there? Was that an early, early penalty, ladies and gentlemen? I mean, we'd love to know your thoughts. Come on and let us know. Now, then we had the MacArthur miss. Okay. Now, to me, at that point, okay, uh, MacArthur had been making a nuisance of himself up until that point, but Kwati was playing more. Did you notice that, Ben? Did you notice uh, Kwati playing more of an attacking midfield yesterday as opposed to holding? I think he was an unsung hero of the, yesterday and of the tail end of last season. I think he's a fantastic player. Yeah, he's, nice. I think with Kiate, uh, with Luca, the, the, I think that he should be the first name on the 
pitch, really, to play with Luca in that central midfield. Well, yeah, I completely agree. Whether or not I would have Luca there with Camarasa uh, uh, available, I'm not too sure. I think Luca's position is under Boys. threat. You just opened up the can of worms for the evening. Okay, Luka oh, a, Milivojevic, boys. A new, a new thing, is it? Yeah. Luka Milivojevic. Well, funny if I spoke to Matt Woosnam, who's you know part of the Athletic now, and he went and watched the under-23s and obviously went and watched the Colchester game and thinks Camarasa would really compliment Luka. Yeah. Oh, well, I would, I, I would say just as, just as Kuate does, uh, because they'll do Luca's work. I think that's the problem. Camarasa, I was at the Colchester game. Cam- Camarasa played in exactly the same role, but every time, and I completely appreciate it was against Colchester, but they played really well and they cl- played close us down. He worked the space and found the forward pass so many times, uh, whereas Luca receives the ball, ponders on it, goes sideways. Every now and again, there will be a pass into the middle. <coughs> but winning he, goal. He, he, <coughs> winning goal. But I, I think, I think, as a midfield as a whole, we play sideways more than we play forwards. Yeah, but I think our, our, our outlet was, is wide. It it's not through it the middle, Lucas through the channel. Pulse, so that's uh, that's why we're not transitioning quickly enough. That's what uh, we need. Right, to we'll come to that in a minute, right? Mate. So we, we talk about MacArthur's miss. He should have done better, really. Should he? Uh, Kawhi playing more of as an attacking uh, midfielder, yeah. making a news of himself uh, around the area. Schlup then blasted ball across the the area for Jimmy Mack to. No, you should shove it over from eight mm. yards out. Ian, should he have done better? Should he have yes. hit the target at least? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. He should have, well, I mean, certainly a lot closer than he did. I think he hit the executive boxes, didn't he? No, it wasn't was quite as high as that, but it was. Uh, it certainly was high and wide and ugly. Ben, should he have done better? Yeah, yeah. He's, I, but I think that's that's Palace to a T, isn't it? That we still haven't got that that killer, but the, that killer, you know, in front of goal. We're missing it. Whether it's better Batshui or if it's Benteke, whether it's our midfielders, we are missing that person in the centre that if you square it, he's going to bang it in. Um, and a couple of people I need to say hello to, and there's a message out there for one of them. Bruno, uh, Max Francis, uh, Glenn Fossey, Marilyn, I can see you all out there. Uh, Max Francis, I'm glad you finally made it onto the show. Welcome, welcome to the Red and Blue News. In fact, it was Max that highlighted something to me that early in the week that said, um, if you've got younger viewers want to join us and they're struggling to get on, it turns out that you might need to change their birth dates, okay, because uh, Facebook settings are saying that they need to be 18 and above to come and watch this show on Red and Blue Review Live, okay? Uh, so that if, if you know of people that are struggling to join us, that's the reason behind it. So, you know, you need to change the, change the Facebook settings. So, Alicia, you're here with us now, Max. So welcome aboard, mate. Um, so it's great to have you. Uh, I'm, going, I'm trying to read... going back to Jimmy Mack quickly, yep. Nick, is it's five years ago he signed for Palace today. I know. And he's got more Premier League wins than any other Palace player in history. So. Yeah, 59, is it? 59? Something along those, those lines. Yep. Uh, listen, he's a good servant. And uh, I know he's been he's probably been hit and miss, uh, certainly at the start of this season. I know he's starting to get his critics, but that guy puts such a shift in. Such a shift Definitely. in off the ball. Off the ball, um, that I don't think a lot of our fans appreciate. They only appreciate people when they actually get the ball and what they do with it. But off the ball, that boy works, I tell you. And which is why I, I would go, I mean, go back to what you were talking about earlier with the Luca thing. Um, uh, Macca would be my first name on the team sheet over Luca Milivojevic because I really think he's. He's not his best at the moment, albeit it was his, it was his pass to Schlupp and then Schlupp to uh, uh, Iwood that got us the winning goal yesterday. I accept all of that, OK? Uh, but to me, Maka over uh, uh, Milivojevic at the moment. So we had a couple of other, we had a couple of free kick opportunities that came to nothing. Another from Jimmy Mack driven across the six-yard area, not taken by Jordan Ayew. Uh, I think was, uh, you know, later on in the first half, the dominance started to tell you. Would you not agree, Ben? Yeah, I, I thought we were dominant the whole way through. It was for, for a Palace game at home. I was I, I completely for the first time in a long time enjoyed the second half. It was, yeah, it, okay. We, um, we what we haven't done, boys, is we haven't we haven't touched on the lineup actually because there is somebody that we haven't spoken about yet, and I would like to talk about it uh, when we see the lineup uh, because somebody just mentioned it in the um, 
Cahill. In the chat. No, yeah. no, no, Cahill, oh, were doing little, Cahill were doing a little while, okay, but as far as the actual uh, the lineup is concerned, concerned there is a point of worthy of note of our goalkeeper, Vincent Guaita, Vincente Guaita. Somebody, I think somebody said in there a minute ago, he's made 24 appearances. And how many clean sheets was it? Was it 12 clean sheets so far? Uh, I mean, really? Something like that. I thought Could, it was 10. It might be 10. So it's gone past me in the chat. So forgive me for getting, but it was, and I'm just thinking it's absolutely superb. Yeah. How confident, Ben, I want to start with you. How confident are you on um, uh, Vincenzo over Hennessy and goal? It's not me that's confident. This is the point. It's our back four. They play completely. It's, it's a, we're a completely different side to Guaita playing when Hennessy plays. They they, they completely it's, trust him. It's Lee, that was Lee Lockwood, by the way. He's uh, ten clean sheets in twenty four games. Amazing. Thank you, Lee. I appreciate that, mate. But yeah, yeah they he he just brings a confidence that, that they seem to be calm playing the ball back to him. Uh, the defensive the centre backs pairing are a lot happier, you know, and it's interchangeable. But it just seems to be that the team as a whole function better with Guaita in goal than than Hennessy. Yeah, Ian. Happy yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, again, I watched the culture the double call, um, and Hennessy wasn't ex- exactly inspiring in that. Um, but yeah, Gaita's listen. He's done nothing wrong. He's done nothing to deserve being dropped, has he yet? So. The position's yours until you lose it. So, and of course, don't forget, he also had an, ass, an assist for an assist for an assist yesterday. Um, Ian? It was his rollout. It, yeah. Did, oh, Colchester, like yeah. me, did you, when we went to the penalty shootout, did you think at any point Hennessy was going to save him? You know, no, not know. a chance. Not a chance. In he fact, the only thing is he got really close to their third one, but I think Which that was, was the worst like, penalty of the night, wasn't it? And yeah. they still got oh, yeah. in. Yeah. Um, just doesn't inspire. I mean, even after the first 30 seconds, he tried to run the ball out, didn't he? And then he got caught and it was a corner. Um, you just think, oh, really, Wayne? Look, that penalty shootout that you're referring to, Ben, I was actually sitting in the car listening to it on the radio. So obviously I couldn't see any of the penalties. OK. And even I didn't have any confidence in him saving them. Anyway, that's that's beside the point. Sorry, Lucy, could you just pop that back up again? I'm ever so sorry. I do apologise. Because I want to go through that. A, another thing about Guaita, it only seems to be us so far that know how good he is. He's yeah. completely under the radar of the rest yeah, that, of the league. Keep it under yeah. the radar. Absolutely right. All right. So Guaita Ward, Kelly, uh, Cahill and Van Arnholt across the back, which is what you would expect. Milivojevic holding, Kwasi pushing on, MacArthur, uh, Hodson's love child, Azaha and Ayu. Um, did oh, Jeffrey oh. Schluck deserve his start, Ian? Yes. Uh, listen, he could be his love child as long as he as long as he keeps playing well. That boy gets in the box, you know, and that's him and Kwate coming back is why we've won the last two games. And Cahill, sorry, man, I should say Cahill, but you've we've now got that that ruggedness, tenacity, and they will just plough through tackles and just keep going and keep going. Those three and um, Schlupp, for all his defensive frailties, his uh, offensive uh, ability for us as being like the third runner and all this this sort of stuff and getting in the box has been invaluable because he just takes defenders uh, out of the picture. And yeah, yeah. And I, even though it was a bad ball for IU's goal, um, listen, he's still there to put it. So yes, yes, yes. Ben, can I ask you, um, was, he, was he right to leave out Ben Teke and Townsend yesterday? Why would you change a team that's just beat Man United at Old Trafford? No, no that's, that's not what I asked you. But was he right? Bear in mind, we were playing at home was. and our, and our thirty million pound striker. <laughs> of course, and our, he was. And one of our best wingers is on the bench. Was he right? Yes. The, the result tells you that. Performance tells you that. Schlapp okay. brings an energy. He's not just you know. He's up and down. He's an absolute machine, and he brings us a, a stability and a, a presence to the side that. Goes underrated, I think, but I, I think you, you don't change a winning team, and I think he played very, very well again yesterday. And I can, and I, ladies and gentlemen, in case you're thinking I'm trying to wind Ben up, I actually agree with what he said just then. Uh, there's no way I would have changed that in a million years, and say, and I would have left Townsend, and I would have left Ben Taki on the bench. I was just trying to get a uh, get a rise out of him, but he didn't. I think Andros has had a very, very slow start this season. 
And to so, be fair, he's been called out for that and left on the bench. And I've also I've had questions that people have questioned his fitness as well. Okay, we are not really? going to do. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people have actually questioned is he as fit as he was back then? Oh, God, I can't believe people are questioning his fitness. Well, we will certainly. Lee Gilbert said in the chat, positive show. Let's not put Wayne down. No, but you're right, mate. This is a positive. It will be I a think we'd like show. to put Wayne down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so yeah. Um, thank you for that, Luke. So yeah. appreciate that. A couple of. Uh, Luke had a free kick after Shut was pushed over just outside the box. Uh, good to see a bit. Oh, no, the variety of the free kick where he went under the ball was in the second half, wasn't it? Was it in the second half or was it in the first half? No, second, first, yeah, no. first. It, no, it was the first half. Um, so apart from that, uh, we, we were we dominated play without really threatening anything in the first half. Second half, early free kick by I can't I can't get his name out. Trezeguet, is it? Yeah. Sailed over the bar, uh, followed by another Trezeguet header, which was easily sa saved by Guaita. Um, in my notes, I actually put at this point. At this point, you felt that at nil nil they could easily nick something. And um, it was somebody actually that was standing with me actually said, you know, they, they feel that you know, after all our pressure, we could they could easily dive up the other end and, and slot one away. We, did you think we were under any threat at that point, Ian? Not really. I think, uh, by and large, we had controlled large swathes of the game. Um, hadn't we? I mean, again, going back to the formation, 4-5-1, I think that was a bit of a... Uh, it was nice to see Roy changing the formation as well to suit the opponents. And that's where I thought that we got the better of them because we kept that because they defend compact, narrow. And by having that fifth midfielder, they were having to cover the wings and we were stretching them. So no, I don't think we were under much pressure at all. I, in fact, I think it was one of those, having seen match of the day just before we came on, uh, all the highlights must have been just about every effort or chance they had. Ben, I want to talk a little bit. I mean, we were talking a little bit about uh, Jordan Ayew and Nick Potter in the chat. He said, has a permanent uh, contract been a contributing factor on Ayew's form? Form, He definitely believes so. Uh, your thoughts on the Ayew thing? Massively. Massively. I think he played, if you're on loan, it's really hard to come in and out of a team. It's almost as if you're a trialist. Yeah. You know, you, you're scared to make a mistake. You in case, you know, because you are playing for your future. Um, the, it seemed Hodgson was very keen to get him back and so were the players, but it's a completely different player to the that we had last season. He's playing with the confidence and energy because it's if you're settled, you've signed a contract, you're not playing for your future, are you? You know where you're going to be. You know, he, I, he's been a revelation, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, and it was, and the beauty about that, the, the quality, he put a uh, quality, uh, Quarty was put in by the troublesome Iowa, is what I put in my note. He shot uh, went high and wide into the homes now. Quarty should have done better. Do you not, not agree with that shot, Ian? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but I mean, having said that, uh, we've got so many midfielders, you know, that we're trying to turn into strikers. Uh, it, it, what we want is someone that's uh, a striker to having those chances. But nevertheless, you know, Quarty, for all his faults, he did, you know, he shoved one over, but then so did MacArthur. So did a number of other people. I'm not going to hold it against him. You know, as we've just said, he's, uh, he's the glue that's sticking, helping us stick it together at the minute. I want to read this one out, if I may. Um, Ryan Corbett has said, and uh, Chris, I can see your, uh, Chris White, I can see your, your point in, you're making in the chat about IU. Uh, when you're not a lone player, uh, you're, you feel wanted. And that was the point I was about to make. Uh, Ryan Corbett has just said, oh, uh, IU's been amazing. I said when we signed him permanently, it was a good deal. But just thought it was thought it would be good backups for the main striker. Obviously, we didn't get anyone in, so it's been absolutely brilliant. Let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, uh, wherever you're watching in the world, and thank you for joining us this evening. Yeah, two point five million pound rising up I, to four million quid. I from from what you hear, it's not even that. Really, it's, it's not even that. It's you know you're. you're I think it's not even north of two million what we paid for him. Good. Which and is at the minute is close to signing of the season, isn't it? Well, listen, if he gets us and it's some more points as a result of his, I mean, he's already got us what three and a half, maybe four points. But you know, if you count his goal against Man United, um, it's worth it. 
uh, I just can't. Let's just uh, James McCarthy shut <laughs> as uh, just as good an impact. There is a. I mean, there's a picture that Lucy's put up on the screen right now. And who's is that? Kuwata, Kuwata right? jumping all over on, him on top, on yeah, top of Jordan. Ayo. Are we not getting used to those pictures? Because last week's picture was Luca on on his back on Ayo's back. Uh, and great, these are great pictures that we're receiving. The metaphor so is carrying the team. He's carrying the team. He's carrying them. Very good, very good. So, uh, Trezeguet Gay being booked in the first half. He, he then lunges on, on Wilf out on, wide on the touchline for his second book of offence. Any argument about the sending off, E? Sorry, say that again. Any argument about the sending off, uh, Trezeguet Gay's sending um, off? I was surprised, actually. I've got to say, I thought the first yellow he got was uh, a little. Uh, well, I think we've been lucky at home with the yellows that the opposition's been getting. Uh, I think so. at least a couple of their yellows weren't yellows. I would have let go. Um, but listen, it's today's game, isn't it? Now, I think uh, so. some of some of the challenges that were going in were championship challenges uh, and expecting to get away with it. And it, they've just got to learn, haven't they? As, as I think uh, it might be my brother actually in the chat said that Villa are just naive at the minute and um, they'll get better. Got, they'll yeah, understand ben, it. Ben, I... I from the from inside the stadium yesterday, uh, I wonder if Kevin Friend was influenced by the uh, reaction from the crowd. And you know, you see Wolf doing his usual flying through the air and hitting the deck, and uh, the crowd banging for blood. Uh, did we get what? Did we get lucky with that second yellow? Yes, or was that a yellow? No, I, I think the challenge was worthy of a yellow. It's the it's you can't make that kind of tackle when you're already on a yellow. It's an inexperience and a. That's that's caused it. Even the Villa manager said he shouldn't have made that tackle. So, if the, his manager is going to come out and said it was worthy of a second, then we'll agree with him. Okay. Uh, next one I've got listed down is uh, Lucas shot from outside the box, uh, blinding save by um, Tom Heaton. Heaton, yeah, that was um, that was a cracking shot though. It looked in all the way from behind the goal, and we're behind that corner. Uh, everyone's out of their seat and how he got his fingertips to it, I don't know. But um, yeah, no, it was a good shot. Uh, and, but we were on top at the time, you know. We should, we were getting chance after chance at that, that point. Yeah, I know. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sadly, uh, it looks as though Joel's not being able to sort out his uh, technical issues. He is watching, he is live. If you've got anything you want to talk to Joel about, put it in the chat because he can see every each and every word that you're writing, as as can I. Um and we'll get his we get his technical stuff sorted out. It was weird because we, we had this a couple of weeks ago, and for the last couple of shows he's had no issues at all. Uh, so we actually don't know what the what the problem is. But he's there. Say hello to him. Give him your best wishes. Whatever you want to do. Call him ugly because he answers to all of that. Um, and and he's, <laughs> and he's pretty good. Not probably. Um, so I I then had a chance where he picked the ball up in a similar position in front of block C. So you know where I'm talking about. Uh, similar to the position to where he scored the goal from, okay, he gets the shot off. Uh, it would have been a spectacular effort, but that was slightly off target. Remember that one? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, as you say, I mean, he's. It, it was very reminiscent to uh, maybe he was just trying to dry a run before the goal. But um, <laughs> it, uh, again, uh, that this is he's not a striker. When we signed him, he is actually a winger. That's how where he's made his name. Uh, at Villa and uh, uh, Swansea, so I think people are putting a lot on him just to expect him to be a striker and that, and uh, for him to to do well. But then coming off the wing is his natural natural game, so it wasn't a surprise to see him get beat a few players and get an effort away for that one at all. Okay, a couple of stuff coming out of the um, out of the chat, if you don't mind, Paul Glance, evening, Lord. Uh, he uh, ref was a, was a home a lot, at last. At that time, he went on our side. Is his point? Greg Ellis from this parish. Greg Ellis, get on the show, mate. With her. That time you got your ass on here. We need to see you. Uh, what's your thoughts on the transfer fees for players? Are Palace uh, Palace spent very little in the summer? Uh, are we doing a money ball? Come to that later on. Uh, Claire Davis said about the bookings. Two yellows, well deserved. Uh, Ryan Corbett, Lady Luck was finally going our way for a change. And do you know what? Uh, I thought that's exactly the same. You said we actually had some luck. We rode our luck against Man United. And we certainly, I think we had the same yesterday. Uh, Graham O'Neill said in the chat, two bookable offences. Uh, he agrees. Um, 
I can't read you what Paul said about Gel Holyoke, uh, but there are people uh, saying hello to Gel okay. in the chat. <laughs> uh, stop it. You can't, you can't read those out. You can't read those out. Nigel Croucher, friend doesn't like to be goaded by the fans and the Villa fans were giving it to him big style, a bit like we did to uh, against Southampton. Okay, and Obviously, that's when uh, Zaha applauded and then got sent off for it. Okay, so we we'll move on to we, we've done Lucas shot from outside the box. I you then had a chance where he picked the ball up. Oh, we just done that one. Done that one goal, well. Ben, can you talk me through your thoughts of the goal. So uh, the I'll, I'll give you the heads up on it. So uh, rolled out by Guaita, Luca forward pass to Schlupp. He then puts the ball in behind their right back to Jordan Ayew, who then slips between Ings and Grealish and drills it past Heaton. What did we do right? What did we do wrong? What is your thoughts on that goal? It was, it was, well, I think where Villa have probably struggled yesterday is they set up as the away team, but so did we. Yeah. So when we finally did, when they did commit to an attack, we did what we do, which is the counter. I you ran it and ran it, and he kind of got in between Grealish. He was quite fortunate because the ball kind of it deflected off back him, onto him. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the finish was absolutely lovely, wasn't it? It was low, hard, cold round to the bottom right hand corner. Is although I know he was saying that I use a a winger, but he was he's been top scorer last season, wasn't he? For Swansea, and I think he was top scorer at Villa as well, wasn't he? he was on loan there. Yeah, yeah. But I think well, he, he, he knows where the goal is. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. But cutting in from the wing, get it, that's his natural um, natural role, if you like. He feels more at home cutting in and then coming across the keeper as opposed to being square on. Although, having said that, that finish against Man United was exactly the opposite, isn't it? it was square on, pass it beautifully into the corner. And, and I said, I'll refer to earlier, Ben, how great to hear the whole stadium singing IU's name. Uh, Talk about if this is a if this is what the guy needs if he needs a bit of confidence and a bit of love okay well he got it yesterday and it can only lift his spirits going into the next few games can't it? Yeah. And yeah, it was definitely. also it was the perfecto all stars team wasn't it which they used to sing with Johnson. Yeah, that's right. Is, yeah, uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so and I it, suppose it, we better do the we better cover the most important part of the game moment of con- controversy right at the end pissing down the rain the drive from midfield from Grealish drives into the box. Cahill alleged challenge and I think he withdrew his leg Greenwich goes down play uh, play continues and the ball drilled past Guaita by Lansbury Greenwich gets booked for simulation then all hell breaks loose OK individually boys Ben you start your thoughts in, in detail please mate if it was me and it was Zaha I'd be absolutely livid that he didn't get the penalty or, or the goal was disallowed. The VAR doesn't count. People keep going on VAR. As soon as the whistle's blown, the referee's made a decision it can't be referred to VAR. So Agreed. that's... I don't think Grealish played that pass. I don't think he was looking for Lansbury. I think he was starting to go down and that it was quite a fortunate that the ball rolled out to the right to make it look like a pass to Lansbury. But I think he was going down. I think he it's whether you call it simulation, making the most of a tackle... Yeah. Yeah, I think, and going through his performance through the game, I think at that point in the game, where he was on the pitch, he was looking for it. And the, it was kind of unfortunate for him that he, he did simulate or dive, if you want to call it, but he'd also played unintentionally the perfect ball to Lansbury. OK, Ian, your thoughts? Well, just look at that picture. His shorts are obviously too tight for him to be able to run in. So he's just fallen over, isn't he? You know, if he gets bigger shorts, he might be able to stand up a little more. But I would agree in that, you know, he's, he's uh, the boy that cried wolf. The one time where I think he, there was there was contact, but it was outside the box because obviously it carried on inside the box. Cahill then obviously takes his leg away and then goes over. And as you say, Ben, as he's stumbling over, <laughs> inadvertently, Toad pokes it straight to Lansbury, who then shoves it in the back of the net. But yeah, no, I think it was... Uh, and I agree, VAR, all these people calling for VAR and, you know, VAR would have turned it over. No, they wouldn't have because it wasn't clear and obvious. The, the, the decision that Friend made wasn't a clear and obvious mistake. It was what he called it and the end of story for me. I, I think you, you see Grealish at no point was his head up to see where Lansbury was, who was, who was shielded. 
So but I think he made the perfect pass though. whilst in the middle of a dive. Yeah, no, and, and if you look at the slow motion as well, once he gets the nudge from Wilf, he's on his way down, isn't he, as he enters it, the, the box. Then Cahill goes to pop his leg out and then withdraw it. And then, you know, it's uh, from there he just manages to get the toe poke away. Lansby, to be fair, absolutely finished it beautifully. Gates had no chance in that one. But I just well, thought, oh. Did the whistle had blown. So is is guy to actually making a full attempt to save it, or is it? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, that's a fair point. I mean, I don't know. Were you at the game, Ben? No, I couldn't get the day off. I've been oh, struggling. You, it's it the middle just... of summer, so getting only, any only time a off. Yeah, right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen in the chat, I'd like your views. Okay, Sorry, I, I just had to do something very quickly, um, but I would like your views. Was that a penalty or? Did we get away with one pen or no pen in the chat, please? And we'll get to them in a minute. Uh, the last well, thing I, I want to touch on in the game, and I want to I want to move on to something else, if you don't mind, um, was that he, the, how muggy were those Aston Villa fans? Uh, they oh, were. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's I, talk, I, go on, Ben. No, go on here. Well, I mean, they started piling through the holdings and trying to get onto the pitch and everything, didn't they? Uh, at the end, I know that the. the Police went in, didn't they? they uh, yeah. And the stewards. Uh, and I don't think the Villa players actually did much to help that because Greedish was going off at Hodgson. Uh, and then, you know, it was just handbags. Handbags. It was just crazy scenes. Horrible passes. Unfortunately, ben. Well, unfortunately for the Villa fans that were very, very quick to post on Twitter that the police had pulled out their batons and whatever... What they forget is there's another 20-odd thousand fans in the ground filming them. Yeah. And you saw there, was, there were punches being thrown. There's a couple of the stewards there, you know, aren't, you know, they're, they're not bouncers. They're, you know, kind of young lads there. And they were getting piled into. There were punches being thrown. One of them was a woman, Ben. One of them was a woman. I think they've made themselves look silly yesterday, Villa fans. Um, but they were very quick to go on Twitter. few of them showing, you know, what they would call heavy-handed stewarding, but their behaviour was absolutely disgusting. Our general and again, stewarding, not, our general not, stewarding not was there. by the Villa players. Our general stewarding was there in its normal strength yesterday. But I did see some stewarding in there that I'd never seen before. These are guys in dark vests, more like Gestapo stewards, if you like, OK? They were... <laughs> I've never seen them before. They, they look them, very they? serious students, okay? <laughs> and I also saw them in the hotel as well. And, and I thought to myself, it's very, uh, uh, all our normal guys are there and they do a cracking job. And, you know, uh, some of these blokes and ladies have been going to the palace for years and years and years. They're fans like you and I. But there was also, there were a couple of others. In fact, I saw a clip on Twitter about the, in front of the um, Villa fans. A couple of those guys were... Involved. Let's just put it that way. Um, I want to move on to some. Can stats. I just I say what? No, before before you on. move on, can I just say Go one on. thing about the stewarding? In front of us, it was an absolute peach of a scenario. There's a guy sitting with a his little kid on his lap uh, in the lower Homesdale in a 19 early 60s Palace Fest. You know the one with the predominantly claret and the thin yeah. blue stripes. Yeah, and he Nick was, was in his mid 30s then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick, I remember that. But he was, he was trying to, the steward was trying to chuck him out thinking he was Villa. And, oh, really? and the, the guy turned around and said, you need to learn the club's history, mate. And everyone's going, yeah, bugger off, bugger off, leave him alone. Right, what, what I don't understand is still why the away fans are put next to the family enclosure. It's, that, that's what gets me. It's, if, you're, if you're a 20-year-old River Island, Stone Island, Burberry-wearing brummy and you're giving it to a bunch of Married men, women with their kids with them. It, you really need to take a long, hard look at yourself, to be honest with you. I couldn't agree more. Well, let's do some stats, because Ian, Ian, I know you've got some. But I want to kick off with a, a few of my own, if you don't mind. Um, a, gentleman, a, got. a gentleman, I know, no, no, these are different, I can assure you. I've got some real left field stats that some of you might not have seen or heard over the last 24 hours. And this, these are supplied to me by a guy that I go to, um, not those stats, you haven't got these, love. Okay, but anyway, let's, let's cover Lucy's stats. Um, you know, 53% possession, I think that's about fair. Shots on target, 15. Uh, sorry, shots 15, shots on target, 5. Corners, we had a whole series of corners at one point. I think four, literally one after the other, uh, and fouls were about even. 
Okay, so Paul Gear is a guy that I go to a lot of my away games with. Uh, mate, thank you for what I'm about to read out. This is great content, and I'm really grateful to you. Thank you, buddy. Uh, first time Palace have had an opposing player sent off in both of the first two home league games of a Premier League season. Random. First time in the Premier League that Palace have started with two home clean sheets. I didn't work that one out. Despite a non-first cho first choice defence, it's Palace's best defensive start to a Premier League season after four games with just two goals conceded. The last time Palace can started... Just, the, can I just counter that? Is You're saying first choice. You've got Mohamed, Mohamed Sacco sitting on the bench. So he's, he's not on reserve, is he? Yeah, we he's just start, so strong at centre-back now. Yeah, but he didn't well, start. It's not our first choice, but Gary I Cahill... Just, I, Gary oh, Cahill and Mamadou Sacco will be our first choice, I guarantee you. Even, even when Tompkins comes back, and we, I want to talk about the Kelly injury in a minute as well. Okay, uh, the last time Palace started a league season with a, a run like this, a draw, loss, win-win sequence, sequence, was we went on to win the division we were playing in at that time. Division 1, 93-94. The last time we beat Man United 2-1 away and Villa 1-0 at home in the same, same season, we got to the FA Cup final. What year was that? 1990. Okay, Ian, your stats. Go for it. Well, I've just ripped them up. We've come out with them all. Uh, you, you haven't got those. You have not well. got those stats. You have not got those stats. You're lying. Well, okay. All right. Well, I think I've got... Uh, we won three out of the last four league home games and I think that's just as many as we've won in the last 10 um, although that's not much of a stat really is it sorry apologies for that one um, and it's the first time that Roy has had a team that's beat Villa out of the five teams that he's managed that'll be us West Brom Liverpool Fulham and Blackburn he's never beaten Villa before no well until yesterday no allegedly no yeah that's right that's right stat attack Stat attack. So you you just been bombarded with stats, there, folks. Uh, anything else there? No, that's it. That me do. Right, okay, before I'm we go on to questions, then, boys. Can I have a uh, stat? Can I do a stat? Go on, go on, Benno. Well, if you take all results to from since February, we would be fourth in the league. So thoughts? there you go, and we're awful. There you go. <laughs> but if you take it from and, February and from the start of August as this well. season, mm. we would be fourth, and Brighton would be, I think, third bottom. Which I think yeah, that's one I like. I love that one. Mind the okay. gap, boys. Mind the gap. Mind the gap. So all the comments in the chat. Boys, I don't know if you can see the gap. Uh, uh, Simon Krimmer says, if anything, souls have... Oh, it must be Zaha. Uh, have to have a free kick outside the box for a push on the back on Zaha. Okay. Gary Clark says, one of our stewards was proper kung fu fighting. Was he, was he Gary? I didn't see that. Scott Clark, I don't know if there's any relation to you, Gary. If that, uh, if that was against us, we would have been livid. Uh, free kick outside the box, outside the area uh, on that push from Zaha. Uh, I'm struggling with some of these. Neil Chatterjee, I thought he was always he always won his first game in, against Villa. Not sure what that refers to. Uh, Matthew Luca, uh, Cahill and Sacco as centre back pairing. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, mate. I, I couldn't believe you agree. Would you? Okay, let's do the centre back pairing. Hold on, boys. hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Nigel Croucher has put Roy Hodgson as a very impressive record against Villa. He's won more Premier League games against them than he has any other side, which effectively means, Ian, your stats are liar. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? Nigel, I just found out. 99% of all stats are made up. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> Talk, uh, so, talking about Nigel, Nigel Croucher up north, Wyoming, uh, we do not do bad... Uh, this uh, this second best start of our Premier League seasons since our return in 2013 after four matches and we and our points position. So, in you and I covered this off earlier. 19-20, uh, obviously, with 47 points. 18-19, 15th. 17-18, with 20th at this stage. 16-17, uh, 11th, and so on and so forth. Uh, great stuff. Thank you for that, Nice. Thank you for letting me take that off. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, there's, there's over 90 of you watching the show out there. Please don't forget to... Listen to the uh, our own podcast. We're available on po Apple Podcasts, a cast, Spotify, YouTube. Lucy will put the website details on on the page in a minute. So uh, it's, please take a look. Okay, and if you, if you know people that haven't seen the show live, 
send it to them on a link, okay? With our love, we want you to do so. Spread the word of Red and Blue Review. So what's up next for us? Okay, after, so we've got the international break coming up. Okay, after the international break, Palace resume their Premier League season with a trip away at White Hart Lane uh, on Saturday, September the 14th at three o'clock. Uh, are you guys there, Ian? No, I'll be playing football, sadly. I went to the first time we played there. Uh, very impressive stadium, amazing stadium. But, um, I know, I, and I, I must be. Do you know I what? Know. I think Tot- Tottenham are there for the, um, for the taking at the minute. I think they're quite shaky. And Trust I think with our game... Also, Anton, also Anton, if you look at the game, you know, I don't know if you, either of you saw the game this afternoon. You know, they've, both got their, they've both got their defensive frailties. They've both got Arsenal their... bought the wrong centre-back. Uh, we have a bloke in the chat that says, Joel, Joel, Joel Holier, he said, I'm going to let you guys... Oh, OK, don't worry about it. He's, he's talking about his microphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said that about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> we can talk, about, right, we can talk right. about the centre-back. Questions from the audience. Yes, okay. we could, couldn't we, Ben? Yeah. We could, should we just ignore him? Pratt yeah, let's, do it. let's, do it. let's do it. take over. Hey? Well, Hong Kong talk about it. I've got two pages of questions for the audience that you lot haven't got. So it's even going to be... Well, let's just stay on for another 20 minutes then. Okay. Let's just do right. it. Let's kick off with one. In, okay, this, I'm, I'm addressing both of you here and I'll read you the question. Now, it's quite a long one, okay, but I'd like your thoughts on both of it. This is from Larry London. Larry, is that your real name? Is that, no. Is, is London your sir, real name? Call blimey, governor. Of course it is. <laughs> Andros really Townsend. Right, okay, we're going to discuss Andros Townsend. I know we touched him on earlier. Andros Townsend has been a powerhouse, our star man for Palace, not picked in the last two starting lineups. Uh, maybe seems unusually been a bit quiet. What's going on here? He said, I've got oh, big hopes for, I, hang on, big hopes for Ayu. Uh, looks so cool under pressure with a lot more attention on him now. I hope he can carry on calmly as he seems to put him away in big games like yesterday at Man United. Is it not often he goes, uh, okay, right. Do Andros Townsend for me, Ben. That worked well, well didn't it? Yeah, keep going. Townsend. Um, I think he started slowly. Maybe has his age caught up with him a little bit. I don't know. Is it the fact that he's now got an afro that he went to the hair studio? So he's carrying a few more ounces in the hair department. I don't know. But he's, oh, I think afro. he's certainly, I think he's not worthy of starting at the minute. The last couple of games. Well, he's, a, he's an excellent sub to have on, have to bring on. But no, I'm quite happy that he's on the bench at the minute. Nigel, Nigel Crouch, who says Peaky Blinders is on at 9 o'clock, so he wants us to finish at 9. Tough luck, well, OK? That's, that's uh, fine, Lucy, Nigel. Catch up on the podcast. Lucy Download did, it later. Lucy did a poll earlier on. Was it a penalty against Grealish or not? Yes or no? Uh, we got away with it. Yes, you, uh, can you put it on screen, please, Lucy? And Greg Ellis has said, are you going to come back to me on my Moneyball comment? Uh, did you actually understand his point about uh, Moneyball, Ian? Moneyball yeah. is was a was a, a, a tact, well, a strategy employed in baseball mm-hmm. by um, a chap who didn't who looked deeper into statistics than he Bay did. Yeah. He looked way back in like they went. It was almost like an algorithm that they were picking up players from the most random of teams that had injuries three or four years before and playing in certain circumstances. I don't think we are anywhere near as organised with Friedman and his scouting network to play Moneyball. Have that yeah. kind of <laughs> out, you know, world Free view. Moneyball, God help us all. No, but I think AU, we, we, we had to sign him pretty much. Um, I think Cahill, it was a perfect storm of circumstances that we managed to sign him. Thank God for that. I, yeah. I think not signing a right back despite having six weeks to do so is unforgivable. Mm-hmm. I think not having positive, cover positive gentlemen. No, I mean, but this is our cover. Not having, not, having cover, not having cover at left back is unforgivable. So if we are talking money ball, then no, because if that's what we are doing, then we are not doing our job properly because right. we are not scouting players and having them lined up one after the other. Ian, can I'll I go back to the, Ian, well, can I'll I'll I go back to the town end? No, no, no. Let, let me finish the Townsend thing because uh, I was thinking about this with uh, a mate of mine, Wayne Hetherington, earlier. And we're both of the opinion that he's being kept on the sidelines and letting Wilf do his, do his thing. And then when Wilf goes, 
Townsend will come back in fresh as a daisy and then he will start tearing up the league and then uh, uh, Parish uh, et al. will go, oh, we don't need a winger, do we? There you go. <laughs> Right, okay, Russell Fisher. Okay, <laughs> Ian, this is to you. And Russell Go. Fisher, he's, he's in New Zealand and he said he will be tuning in live. This is off the page earlier today. Who is our best back four? Ward Sacco, Tompkins, PVA, or Ward Kelly, uh, Cahill on PVA? And of course, we haven't touched on the uh, no. Kelly injury yet either. Well, I'd say neither of those two. I would say Cahill, Tompkins. Um, and then I would oh, do I have to have PVA I would, do you know what I do I should go with a back three I'll say Kale Tompkins and Sacco Sacco and I'd like to you know, see some, well. I'd, I'd, top, what you've top, got top. there as well is a right foot left foot and one that can play both three and if only we sense. had <laughs> <laughs> if, if we and had a, PVA a right the... back if we still had one Bissaka I think we'd be perfectly set up to play through at the back. Well, I think Townsend have... could play that role. I've got to say, Do you I know? think because yeah, well, because playing a back three, you're, you're, and this is what we did yesterday as well. Oddly enough, uh, our wing backs were far more advanced. They were at least 10, 10 yards in front of the centre backs anyway. And then when you've got such offensive players as those two, um, and then obviously if you're playing a defensive midfielder in Luca or Kiate. Then, if one of the, the three goes out wide, then obviously the defensive midfielder drops back in to make a two pair a pair in the middle. So it's basics. But what do you anyway. think about the fullbacks coming back? Do you think if Van Armholt was given license, I've got to twenty come questions to get through here. That he would come well, back. We just did, we're going to go on for another twenty minutes. Okay, we'll carry on for a minute. Right. Some bloke called, uh, <laughs> sorry, Ben. Wait. He rudely interrupted you there. Sorry, Ben. Carry on. I'm used to it. <laughs> Oh, I was, no, I was just saying, if if we were given license, give our fullbacks license to attack, would PVA kind of forget his defensive duties more? Well, I, I, I don't feel like, yeah, well, I, I, as Nick was just alluding to, he doesn't have any, but I, I, <laughs> I, I, I think that he would only do that once or twice before being hauled off. So. I, I agree. Right, let's give a response to Russell Fisher. Michael Ward actually uh, responded to the centre-back pairing. He said, I think Cahill and Sacco as centre-backs, as for the full-backs, we don't have much choice at the moment. Uh, as much as I love Tompkins, he is quite injury prone at the moment for us, as he was for West Ham. Some bloke called Kevin Lyons, I've no, never heard of him yeah. personally. Just Some guys called him, Kevin right Lyons right. has said, did anybody else see Wilf's face in the stadium as it was being, as well as singing Jordan's name? He's cutting a frustrated figure out there at the moment. Also, we've got to talk about the, the ruck with Luca. Now, but um, I don't mind how you, Ian, you go first. Well, I didn't see Will's face in the stand to be, uh, you know, to be honest. But I didn't see him being frustrated at all. Um, maybe Kev saw it because he's eating the prawn sandwiches down the wing, which yeah, is where yeah, Will stands in front of. Um, but I didn't see. I actually thought he had uh, he got involved quite a bit in the game, and uh, certainly more so than he did during midweek. Anyway, I th- I think it's very clever editing from the live lounge who. Uh... You can create a narrative if you're this. What well, players are singing, crowd are singing one player's name, and then you cut to Zaha. Why cut to Zaha of all players? Because mm. there's a story there, isn't there? Especially with Parish's uh, Daily Mail. Can I uh, can day. we touch on that, Ben? Okay, because funny enough, Graham Daniels, just, hard, Graham Daniels has just said in the chat, okay, Batman will replace Wilf in a swap deal. Uh, Wilf will be going to Chelsea. Now, do you know what? Graham, you and I don't know each other, but actually, that was mentioned on more than one occasion in the stadium. Yeah, we've said it for a long time. Um, and it's something I was, that we've go on, Ben. I was sorry, I was on the train yesterday with a Chelsea fan who was convinced that was what was happening. Convinced, and he was on his way back from the Chelsea game, and that seems to be the talk of Stamford Bridge as well. So, would that be then, in in, in your opinion, would that be Wilf? Batman, Batman in cash or not, or just a straight well, story? I, I, well, for a start, it fits into the narrative that we've been covering on here for weeks now, um, and yeah, I think that any deal will certainly be players plus cash. Um, no one's going to fork out eighty million up front uh, at the minute. I mean, Chelsea could, but I also don't think we want it. I think what we want is Reese James uh, and Batch White. Plus a little bit of money. I personally don't think we get a week. I'm going to try and go, try and go through these 
fairly quickly, if you don't just, mind, boys. Just I'm... to finish that again with Zaha, don't forget, in, in a year's time, he's not an £80 million player because he's taken another year off his contract. He's then £60 million player and then in touch with a, a lot more clubs that might want him. And before I mention the, last, the next one, I believe we've actually had Zaha's best years anyway already and it's maybe, maybe the time well, is well. right. I don't think it's going to ease as much of a miss as everyone seems to have worried about at the start of the season. Did so what I just said. Did so what I just it, said. OK. It, well, Paul it, Bright, it means said. it's a sea change of stop Zaha, stop Palace. Once he does go, we have to learn to find a different way to play. Correct. Which will oh, be interesting. Right. And it will take more than having Batashri come to us and everything will be all right. It's going to have to be a sea change of mentality and players. Camarasa and Meyer in the starting line. Right, last one for another day, gentlemen. Paul Bly has said, is it, right, is it, Paul Bly has said, is it me or does there seem to be some tension between uh, Milivojevic and Zaha uh, after the spat they had during the game yesterday? Uh, uh, have we touched on that yet? We haven't, have we? Well, I didn't well, see it. I, again, well, it I seems, didn't. suits a narrative, doesn't it? it? It seems to be focus on Wilf. Wilf's unhappy. Wilf wants to leave. Every time Wilf shoves his hands in the air, rolls his eyes, it's on a focus. He's done it for years. That's how he plays. He's always on the edge of having a go at someone. It's just now highlighted by the media because they like a story. Uh, Mickey Philpott says in the chat, if Zaha doesn't buck up, nobody will want him anyway. OK, and on that subject, Andrew Adams also said on the chat earlier in the day, Zaha thought he looked disinterested in the first half, came into it on the, uh, after the sending off, still don't think he's firing on all cylinders. With the transfer window open, are we keep, uh, are we going to keep him? Uh, the only reason is, and he's referring to Steve Parrish's mail interview, Do you, is there any chance of him going abroad this, in the next week or so, guys? No. Well, yeah. if, Go on. if you're Paris Saint-Germain, and everyone keeps saying Paris Saint-Germain sent a delegation over, I don't believe that's true either. I think that's another Will sort house just keeping Zaha's name in the press. If you are a Paris Saint-Germain fan and you've just sold Neymar, are you going to be happy that, pa- that your team has just signed Will Zaha? He's not, he's not marquee. Do you know, he Enough. is to us, but to, to the top echelons of football, he's but not he a marquee. Neymar doesn't. <laughs> no, I agree. I think the only place he could go would be PSG in the, the next week or so, but it's not going to happen. It's going to be Chelsea. So, so Leslie Fuller also, Leslie Fuller seems to agree with you, In He said, uh, Zaha Thanks, Leslie. Chelsea. Man of ultimate taste. Zaha to Chelsea for 70 million. Uh, we get Batshuayi uh, for 40 million win win. Um, Peter Hoskney is that I'm sorry if I've got your wrong name wrong Pete Neymar stays at Neymar stays at PSG Wilf stays here so are you are you then saying that um, Peter are you saying that if Neymar does go Wilf goes as well is that what you're saying uh, Nigel Croucher says the French window closes tomorrow um, is that correct I thought it was the next weekend coming no it, it was supposed to close on Saturday but Obviously, because it's the weekend and no one like banks or anything yeah. are working, they extended it to Monday. It closes tomorrow. Everything was shut. Greg, yeah. Ellis, Greg Ellis said, wasn't there interest from Dortmund for Zaha? Um, again, I don't know how much of the truth there was in that in Greg. I think that was more if, paper talk. If he wasn't going to leave in our transfer window, there is no way he's going on deadline day of the European transfer window. Exactly that. Exactly that. Well, Zaha, the saga continues. Ladies and gentlemen, the red and blue news uh, saga continues. Ben, any last points from you? Ian, I'm coming to you. Any last points from you guys? Um, Peaky Blinders is rubbish. Yeah, I agree. And Nigel's, way, well, Nigel's already watching. I don't, there's no point saying that, was there, really? <laughs> maybe, for, maybe for when he downloads the podcast and gets to this point. <laughs> yeah, Peaky, Peaky Blinders is crap. Um, right, uh, Ben, thank you for stepping in at the last moment. I was really grateful for that, mate. Uh, it was superb. Ian, as always, superhero stuff. Very grateful. Um, we have got a weekend off next weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we need Are there action. any Palace players playing international duty or do they have to sign for another club to get a call-up? Yeah, one percent scenario. Yeah. Controversial. Yeah, but I mean, he's Not right. So... controversial at all. No, and I, it's think it's, I, think it, I think it's a fair point. It is. He, think... got, uh, he got pelters, didn't he, um... For it as well. Yeah, tell me what Wan Bissaka has done in those four games that has suddenly made him the international player, other than signing for Man United. Well, Their form is shaky at best. 
they haven't even been great. He hasn't pulled even up. The tree. learned Matt Letizia said as much, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, we, listen, we all knew the minute nobody, he signed for someone else. And nobody takes it away from him either. Okay, we all wish him every happiness. Okay, and I hope he does well for England and everything else. Not necessarily for that lot, but I thought we made him look very ordinary when we played him. Um, but you know, from from my point of view, I wish Juan Bissaka every success when, when he pulls on that on the. Three I do, lines. but it's, it's three months too late and proves everything that we already think about Southgate and England set up. It's not you're not I your know. form until you play. Listen, for. I'm gonna. Um, we haven't touched on the Berry scenario, guys. Um, I want one minute from either or, or 30 seconds from either of you. You, you saw the banner in the Homesdale yesterday. Um, I, you know, how do you think Berry had been treated, Ian, very quickly? Uh, by the letter of the law. So, did they, carry out, their due, did they carry out their due diligence on the, that chairman? Well... They clearly did, didn't they? But whether or not the due, due diligence is up to scratch is a different matter entirely. Maybe they'll learn something from that. But at the time, yeah, every, you know, everything was uh, above board. But unfortunately, it, you, you have rules for a reason, don't you? And you can't just keep making excuses and um, you, allowances for everyone all the time. They're there for a point. And that's I'm, really pleased, I'm really pleased the guys in the homes have put up that banner. It was very difficult to actually read, even on the TV. So I couldn't tell you word for word what actually said, but congratulations to the guys that did it. Ben, your thoughts on the Berry thing before I wrap up? It's just an absolute crying shame that it, it got as far as it went. Um, do diligence of this fit and proper test is, isn't the worth one. the paper it's written on, as far as I'm concerned. And I think that goes through... The, the lower leagues, the championship, even up to Premier League level, there's people running football clubs that have no place in football at all. And I take that to the very highest level. Whether a club goes bust or not, you've got to think, what is your club worth and what do you want it to be? And people keep saying about Palace, oh, we should have someone come in and buy us. Careful what you wish for. I wouldn't want to be owned by an old state or an oligarch, personally. Right. Some dodgy Chinese takeaway. Uh, do you know what? I actually agree with you. Listen, boys, I'm going to I'm going to call it a day there. Um, thank you for your input, you two. More importantly, in the chat, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for each and every comment. I will see them if I haven't caught up with them from you guys. I will do shortly uh, after the show. We're going to take a week's break next week, okay? Unless there's anything massive that happens in the club that we need to get jump on and talk about, then we will do so. Jill's uh, got his holiday coming up. What you can't see over here is he, I've got actually got his, some of his luggage over here and it's going to be huge what he's doing out in Cape Verde. Uh, Has he got a swimwear in it? Uh, he's got... He's got um, <laughs> he's budgie smugglers. Yeah, uh, he's smuggling. Yeah, he's got budgie smugglers. There's a thought. <laughs> now, I've got to go to sleep tonight with that image in my head. Thanks very much. Now, um, good for you. Good luck. What he, him and his wife are doing is massive and there's lots of you being involved in it. So... On my behalf, thank you very much. I know he's going to do a separate thing on it, videos and photographs coming from Gate Verde. Um, when, we, when we actually launch it to the press and the social media, you'll see how big this event's going to be out there. It's going to be huge. There is two parcels over here that I'm not going to tell you about because I'm not going to spoil his thunder, but the club have played their part as well. So hats off to them. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Wherever you've been watching in the world, Ben and Ian, I'm very grateful. Lucy in the background. Greg Ellis, get your arse back on in next week, please, or the week after. On behalf of myself, Nick Philpott, I wish you a safe, a pleasant couple of weeks, and we'll see you after the Tottenham game. Good night, everybody. Thanks ever so much. Cheers, Bye -bye. everyone. Bye.